Hello and welcome to Tech Report. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to hack the MWare ESXi to run Apple Mac OS X on non-Apple hardware. I'll walk you through the installation of the Unlocker patch on VMware ESXi, and I'll also show you how to tweak your VM to run OS X. Back in 2011, Apple gave its enterprise customers a giant middle finger when it discontinued its XServe line of server computers. Apple's official replacement for the XServes is the Mac Mini, which is not really a replacement at all. With no hardware RAID, limited hardware upgrade options, and the inability to easily rack mount the unit, Apple has said very clearly that there is no place for OS X in a modern data center. This, however, can easily change, especially if you're willing to get your hands a little dirty. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Mac OS X onto a VMware ESXi virtual machine, making the operating system truly hardware independent. Before I launch into this video, I should give a brief disclaimer. Everything I'm about to show you in this video does violate Apple's draconian end-user license agreement. According to the agreement, you are only allowed to run OS X on Apple-branded hardware, which means that running an ESXi virtualized copy of OS X in a business setting is probably a bad idea. This video is intended entirely for educational purposes. You have been warned. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's get started, and the first thing you're going to need is a few simple tools. Obviously, the first thing you will need is a suitable server running the VMware ESXi operating system. I'm not going to run through how to install VMware ESXi in this video because it's already covered widely online elsewhere. In this video, I am using VMware ESXi version 5.5, but any version of ESXi 5 should work for running Mac OS X. The second thing you will need is a copy of a Mac OS X install disk image. Again, you can get these from a variety of sources, and I'm not going to walk through how to do that. You can get them from places including BitTorrent, uh, making your own from DVD, or from ripping the install media out of a Mac OS X 10.9 or 10.8 App Store download. For the last method, uh, have a look at the links in the description for details on how to do that. The third thing you will need is a copy of the OSX VM Unlocker script, courtesy of our friends at the Insanely Mac forums. Because Mac OS X can only officially be run on Apple-branded hardware, VMware ESXi will not allow you to boot an OS X VM on third-party systems. Fortunately, better hackers than I have developed a startup script that disables this check in ESXi and allows OS X VMs to be booted on any platform. You can download the OS X Unlocker script from the Insanely Mac forums or from my mirror. I would, however, recommend downloading directly from the forums as I do not re regularly update my mirrors. The current version of OS X Unlocker as of this video is 1.3. Now that you have all the needed tools, it's time to get started. Extract the downloaded Unlocker files to your local hard drive and upload them to your VMware ESXi server. The easiest way to upload files to your server is to log into it using the vSphere console, browsing to Configuration and then Storage, right-clicking on the data store you wish to upload files to, and selecting Browse. You can then upload the entire directory using the Upload icon in the upper toolbar. At this time, you should also upload your Mac OS X install disk image. After the files have finished uploading, you will need to enable SSH login on your server. You can enable SSH login by navigating to Configuration, selecting Security Profile, and selecting Properties. Uh, scroll down to the SSH section and select Options. From here, you can then start SSH manually, and if you so desire, you can choose to have it start automatically with your host operating system. Now that we've uploaded the files and enabled SSH, it's time to actually start hacking. First, you will need to log into your server using SSH. So on your PC using PuTTY or your favorite SSH client, log into your server using the root account. Next, you will need to CD to the directory that you uploaded the unlocker scripts to. And note that by default, uh, ESXi mounts data stores to slash VMFS slash volumes. So in my case, I would be CDing to slash VMFS slash volumes slash data slash unlocker version 1.3. Once you're in that directory, you want to CD to the ESXi directory. And once you're there, do a directory listing by typing ls. You should know that there's three files, install.sh, uninstall.sh, and local.sh. 
You will now need to make those files executable by typing chmod plus x followed by the file name. You will need to do this three times for each of the files. After that, do another directory listing by typing ls and you should note that the files have turned green, which now means they are executable. At this time, all we need to do is install the scripts by typing dot slash install dot sh and pressing enter. It should install the scripts and prompt you with a completed message when it's done. It'll also tell you you have to reboot the host operating system. Reboot the host machine from the vSphere console and wait a few minutes until your server comes back online. At this point, all of the actual hacking is done and you basically just need to deploy a new virtual machine using the newly enabled Mac OS X templates. To deploy a new VM, click on the Getting Started tab and click the Create New Virtual Machine option. Select Custom and when asked which type of operating system you would like to install, select Other and then select Apple Mac OS 10.7 64-bit from the drop-down menu. Note that this template will work for any version of Mac OS X, including 10.8 and 10.9. Walk through the steps until you get to the screen where you're asked to select memory for your virtual machine and select at least 2 gigabytes of RAM as OS X will refuse to install on anything less than 2 gigs. Continue to step through the steps. For the most part, everything can be left as default and click finished when done. After you've finished creating the new virtual machine, you will need to right click on it in your inventory and select edit settings. Navigate to CD slash DVD drives and make sure you select data store ISO file. Click on the Browse link and browse to the Mac OS X install disk image that you uploaded earlier. Note that if you uploaded a DMG file, you will need to change the file type filter to all files. DMG files do work natively with ESXi. Make sure the Connected at Power On option is selected. Save the settings, right click on your VM again and select Start Virtual Machine. You can then right click, open up the console tab, and you should see the spinning Apple logo followed by the OS X installation screen. Install OS X as you normally would, making sure to format your new virtual hard disk using the Mac OS disk utility. Performance wise, the operating system seems to be fairly stable. I have been running my own Mac OS X VM for several months now and have not had any serious performance issues, although the VM is a little bit more sluggish than it would be on an actual Mac computer. The best part is, OS X can now be installed in a server rack once again. For Tech Report, this is Christopher, reporting. <laughs>